So faculty publication patterns at a large urban university in correlation with collection use and size is the title of the University of Illinois Chicago's research project. This is our second presentation this afternoon and the, the team for this project includes Sandy de Groot, Young Miskoulis, Paula Dempsey, Deborah Blasick, and Felicia Barrett. And I know, uh, Sandy, I'm gonna turn the podium over to you to start your presentation. Hi, everyone. Um, so <clears throat> as I already mentioned, we focused on how the library or does the library help increase research uh, productivity and, and impact. And so um, our primary questions that we tried to address uh, included have the number of references included in publications increased as journals increased. Are the number of publications by authors correlated with the number of references used in the publications among our faculty? And does the number of references included with an article correlate with later impact or the citations that the articles get? So um, we had a, uh, a somewhat involved methodology. We did a really a longitudinal study and went back um, 25 years to look to see how publications have changed over the years and is there any relationship with the number of journals that are available. So we um, identified uh, 802 faculty that had been at UIC for at least five to 25 years. And then we put them all into um, groups of have they been here for five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, or 25 years, um, so that we could look at those patterns over time. And then we went and searched for their publications in Scopus. And as part of that, we um, got the number of references that they included in those publications and also how many times those articles were cited in either five year or 10 year increments. And we did that to control that variable because obviously the more an art, older an article gets, the more times it's gonna be cited. Um, so we did that to control for that time. Um, and then we also collected whether the article was grant funded, and that was based on Scopus saying it had grant funding, and the number of authors uh, that were on the article. And so just in terms of our overall findings, um, over the years, as our journal holdings increased, um, the number of references that were in publications increased and the average publications. And so it'd be great to conclude at this point that yes, the library's holdings is, uh, you know, helped increase publications, but it turns out it's a lot more complex than that. Um, that slide that I just showed you, um, that's all the faculty that were in the study because obviously as new faculty come, they could potentially have different types of uh, publication uh, productivity levels. We also then just looked at the faculty who had been at UIC since 2000. So this is just looking at the same people each year uh, since 2000. And you can see that even though with those people, the number of references that they're including in their publications and the publications themselves uh, on average per author are increasing over time. And um, this is somewhat some similar information, but the thing to point to here and pay attention to is that also the number of average authors per article increased over time. So then we also went and took a look at, well, how does um, productivity relate to the number of references that are included in articles. In a previous study that uh, one of my colleagues and myself had done, we had found that there was a negative correlation between the number of publications and the use of references and publications. And in this study, we also found that there was um, a negative relationship, although it wasn't significant. But it generally sort of implies that the more you publish, the less you cite. So we um, delved into that a little bit more. So what this particular slide is showing is we grouped people into, this group is our um, le least productive 
authors. So they wrote five or less publications. Um, and then this is the group that is writing between 60, six to 70 publications on average. And then this group here, the um, kind of oranges group, that group is writing um, like a lot of articles. They're writing at least 71 or more um, articles. And then we looked at the average references and average authors in those groups. So for the group that's the least productive, um, they have the least number of authors and the least number of references that they use in their publications. Although over time, those numbers both increase. Then we have the group, the redder group, that those are the more, um, your kind of productive group, but not super productive, but pretty productive. So 60 to 70 publications. And so um, they have a lot more authors on their articles. Those increase over time. They are the group that uses the most references in their publications. And then we have the orange group, which is the most productive group. Their number of co-authors also increased over time, um, as did their use of references. But overall, their use of references in that group that's the most productive is less than that group that is productive, just not super productive. So you can see that there's really some variations in productivity um, related to um, the references that are included in publications. We also then took a look at some of the disciplinary differences. This is just showing our health sciences because to show everyone, it becomes a very crowded slide, but you can see that in different disciplines on average, their um, publication levels are very different. So average per person. Um, it does also look like in nursing that that publication number declined. This is of all the faculty in the study. So it is possible. I think I did redid this with just um, the same people all the time in all the years. And I believe that potentially this is maybe a sign of retirements or people going into um, administrative roles that that might somewhat explain that decrease in productivity. But you can see that, you know, overall, publications increased, um, but at different levels. And then the same with inclusion of references um, at different levels, uh, references overall, uh, with the exception of nursing used in publications also increased on average. Um, then there was also, um, as I've brought up a number of points here, um, confounding variables that we can't really ignore as we look at these patterns that appear. So, um, sorry, I actually thought that I'd change these slides a little bit, but anyways, we'll go with it. Um, So as you can see here, you know, yes, publications increases over time. Uh, average references are increasing over time, but also our average authors are increasing and our grant funding is increasing. And also our average number of faculty at our institution increased. And those all play a role in productivity. Um, and you can just see a little bit clearer in this slide here um, how publications increased, but so did productivity. Um, we also, so, you know, the thing that we can't really conclude is that, you know, 100% because we increased our um, holdings, that po productivity also increased because co-authorship, uh, grant funding, increased people to even write articles with probably all plays a role in uh, productivity. In addition to that, we are kind of saying that because people are using references in their collections, that obviously, um, or sorry, references in their articles that obviously, um, we are kind of making the assumption that goes come from our collection. But we also have to recognize that at the same time during all this, you know, increase in journals because of online, increase in access to journals because of the big, um, journal bundles, um, 
There's also a number of databases that are becoming available online and available remotely from the library. There's a number of new databases that are becoming available. A lot of open access journals are becoming available. Um, so, and also people can collaborate with colleagues outside of their institution. They could potentially have asked them to share articles with them. So there's really a lot of variables that can play a role in um, what references are included in the publications. But we do know that in looking at the, the references that were in the publications that a large majority of them were potentially held by the university library. Um, but there's just no way to say just how much of that availability of our online additional journals um, played a role in increasing productivity. We also uh, took a look at um, how um, grant funding was related to the use of uh, to productivity and also to the use of references. And so these are the grant funded articles. And so um, over time, uh, you, well, you can see that generally more articles are published that are grant funded than not grant funded. And those articles that are grant funded tend to use more uh, references in them. And also there tends to be more uh, productivity related to articles that are grant funded. and also more co-authors on grant funded articles. So again, just another potential confounder with, oh yes, of course the library helps increase productivity. Andy, one more minute. Okay. We also then just looked at cited references. So to see what kind of impact the library might have later. And um, you can see that in general, the number of articles that are getting cited uh, over time increases. Um, and it's really the latter six to 10 years after publication where articles are getting more citations rather than the first five years. So then we looked at, so does the library um, help to increase research impact? And so we looked at the um, number of publications and um, this is looking at a regression analysis um, to predict what citations that articles will later receive. So the number of references, number of authors, and whether an article was grant funded was explored as predictors of later research impact based on the number of citations an article gets after five years. And all three were significant, although grant funding was kind of on the cusp, but there was some suggestion there that yes, the use of the references in publications does have an impact later in the overall uh, citations that an article gets. And that's it. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Sandy.